Okay, we're back. Happy New Year. I hope you had a good holiday with your loved ones. My holiday was rather eventful. I took a road trip down to Southern California from Washington State, saw some wonderful landscape along the way, took photos that I believe can be good for paintings. I had fun spending time with friends and family, but I'm definitely glad to be back. Back to my home and my comfy little studio. During my road trip back to Washington, I took a brief stop in downtown San Francisco. During my lunch stop there, my car got broken into and my laptop, camera, and quite a few other personal items were stolen from me. So I have to drive my car with back window taped. So I came back exhausted and find out the frozen weather in Washington broke my water heater in my tiny house. And the kitchen faucet. So, yeah, my trip didn't end on a sweet note, and my 2022 is having a rough start. But I'm grateful to be back and to be able to paint and do this video, even though this is not the way I want to start my year. I'm confident that this will be a good year. And by the way, I sent out an email talking about my holiday experience with my email subscribers. I got so many replies with kind and supportive words. I even sold some paintings just because people wish to support me. I am so, so grateful for you. I said on the last video of 2021, I would never be here without your support. And in this crazy world we're living in, you help me. Believe that there are more kind people out there than we think. Even though my year didn't start in a very positive way, I'm still very excited for this year. I have a few plans for this year. One of them is to do a complete update on my watercolor essential course. This is going to be the third time I do an update on it. Over the years, I've learned more and more about watercolor painting, and moreover, I learned more about how to help students. So, this update really aiming to make the course more accessible and easier for students to learn about basic drawing and watercolor painting. Hundreds of students have already bought this course, and if you are one of the students, thank you so much. The course update will be completely free for you. So, if you do decide to get the course at its current state, you will still get the update for free. There's no limitation or deadline on it. This is a huge commitment for me now that I share it with you because I am doing everything myself from painting, scripting, filming, editing, everything. So, it will take a lot of work. Other than the course update, though, there are some other exciting things that's going to happen in Cafe Watercolor. I can't disclose them yet, but I am super excited. So, today I'm going to show you the process of this painting. The photo was taken the day I came back home from my trip. When I saw my studio in the snow like these, it gave me a very comforting feeling. The feeling that I'm back. I'm back to where I belong, and I'm back to where I can recharge my energy. I think as an introvert artist, it is so important for me to be able to recover and draw my creative energy. So, to me, this painting is almost like a portrait. Not a scenery, but a portrait of my studio, a portrait of Cafe Watercolor. So, if you like my video, remember to give it a like and subscribe. Ring the bell icon so you won't miss out my next video. Okay, let's take a look at my first painting of 2022. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, this photo was taken the day I came back. And it was snowing really hard in Washington. So, when I came back, the backyard is covered with snow. And it's really beautiful. I think snow make everything look much, much cleaner because my backyard used to have a lot of the dead leaves and branches and a bunch of grass and weeds and things like that. And when it snow, it covers it all up and make it all white. So I really like how it looks and decided to paint it. So I start off by doing a drawing using a doll. 4P pencil, and I try to draw as light as I can while it's still visible to me, so that if I need to do any adjustment or erase anything, it can be done quite easily. Now I switch to a mechanical pencil, and this time I am making the line 
just a little bit more clear and a little bit darker because now I am more certain how things are going to look. And there are some trees in the backgrounds and I'm trying my best to make them look as good as possible in the drawing stage. And it require you to really look at the tree, the shape of the tree, and really try to get that down on the paper instead of having the perception of what a tree looks like and start to draw without thinking much. If you don't study the shape that you are about to draw or paint, you're missing out, you're missing out what the nature provides you and you're missing out how beautiful things are. So drawing stage is really a stage for you to study your subject, especially the shape and the structure of it. So while I eyeball most of the perspective and the structure, I try to study it and I try to look at it as much as I can. So in the end, it might not look photoreal, but it is a believable painting. And this is actually the second time I'm doing the same painting. The first attempt wasn't really that good. Could be because I haven't been painting during the two weeks of vacation. So I need to do a painting or two to get myself back into the groove. But it could be that I didn't plan and thought well enough before I start to paint. So this is the second one that I am doing. So I'm spending quite a bit of time doing the drawing. And I think it's necessary for this painting because I really want to make it believable and representational. And here I am using a masking fluid pen. So just a few areas, especially the string of light bulb there, because those areas are so small, I want to preserve the light a lot easier than paint around all of them. Using a masking fluid will be much easier. Now here comes the first wash. So before I start to paint any color, I pre-wet the area that I'm going to paint some warm light to it. So obviously the windows and where the light bulbs are. So a bit in the background as well and the light part of the snow. So I got some nice soft shape of the light. And then I can start to paint the middle value. So I mix a color for the sky. So it's mostly some blue colors mixed with a little bit of burnt umber just so that I can neutralize that blue a little bit so it's not too saturated and I just go right to it so this is the middle value of the painting so as I do that I need to switch the color around and start to including the tree and some part of the tiny house and I want to connect all that shape together they are separated only by their color but their values is very very similar so what you can do is you can squint your eyes a little bit and see what shapes merge. This is what value study is so helpful when you want to figure out the simple value grouping of the painting. And this is something that I did as well. So I know that all these shapes need to be merged together. And even though they have different colors and even though when it comes to the middle value and the dark, it looks separated, but right now at this stage, I want to connect them all together. You can always add darker values later. So to me, this is the hardest and trickiest stage because I need to maintain the same value, but I also need to switch the colors around and let them merge together. So I need to work quite fast actually, so that I can have one continuous wash. And sometimes the wash does get dry. And in that case, sometimes I will have to work on wet on dry. And that's fine as long as the value overall is very similar. So I connect that shape all the way down to the light part of the snow. Now you might think the light part of the snow is the light value. But if you really think about it, if you want to make 
the light inside the tiny house pops. You have to darken the light of the snow just a little bit. And this is especially important for a nice scene like these because you want to make the light source the lightest part of the painting. So you have to darken the things around it. So I'm using a paper towel to gently lift up some of the paint around the light bulb. So we got this nice soft glowing effect later. Now the second wash is done and it should look nice and clean. So now I am painting my third layer, which is my dark value. I'm going over the sky again because the sky should be a lot darker than what I had. Connect the sky to the rooftop of the tiny house. And I use a clean damp brush to lift some paint to reveal the shape of the skylight under the snow. And before the sky is dry, I start to paint in some dark trees wet onto wet. These trees are very, very dark in the nighttime. And I want them to sort of blend into the sky instead of standing out too much because they're all part of the dark value. So I decided to do it wet onto wet. And I connect the dark shape to the dark side of the tiny house. Again, if you squint your eyes a little bit, the dark side of the tiny house, actually you just merge with the shadow and the dark background. And that's what I am trying to do. I try to connect the shape. And when you connect the shape like that, you create more atmosphere. You create more air and space in your painting which is very, very important, especially for watercolor. And I add some dark to the tree branches on the right. And also I added some color to the background trees. You do see a tiny little bit of green because of the light underneath. Be mindful of your value though. You want to maintain the overall value separations and value grouping. So the trees on the left, also painting the dark side of the tree and the dark background. The tree here serves as some sort of a separation. So I can work on one section of the sky first and then move on to the next one. This way you don't have to struggle to make a complex wash in one go. You can work on one section at a time because of the tree separates the shape. That being said, working on the night scene is more tricky than the day scene just because the amount of dark you have to paint and the amount of shape you have to connect and merge. Which is why I work on the same painting twice because this is not a very, very easy painting. All these tree branches in the photos are actually very, very complex. I simplify them a lot more in my painting because if you try to focus on the complex shape of the tree too much in your painting, you can sacrifice a clean wash. And that's not something I want to do. And also those are not the focus of the painting as well. The tiny house my studio is. So all these trees on the side, they are just acting like a framing device that frames my tiny house in between. So definitely don't get bogged down by the complexity of the tree branches. Just simplify them and as long as they look good, it's okay. Continue with the background. I'm also painting my neighbor's house, but since it's pushed into the background and the overall value is darker, I'm keeping them very loose and much darker so we can push them back and connect that to the shadow of the house on the left as actually the garage of my home. And at this point, I think the painting is starting to work very well. I do need to glaze over some part of the painting because as they are drying, they become a lot lighter than I wanted to. So now I start to work on my tiny house. Start with the siding. And the value of the siding, especially on the right, is actually closer to the dark than the middle value. So that's something to keep in mind. And also give a very faint shadow on the side of the skylight so that the form pops. We show some structure. 
And now it's time to do some details on the tiny house, the lamp on the right, and the handle, the door handle, the door lock, things like that. So I switched to a synthetic brush. It's a stiffer hair, so I'm able to paint smaller shape with ease. So I'm painting the shadow underneath the tiny house as well as the wheel. Now I do switch the color just a little bit, but overall they are very, very dark. So I just leave a tiny little bit of the highlight for the rim and connect the shape. Here I'm painting the stepping logs into my tiny house. Again, those are just very simple dark shapes and I connect that to the shadow, the cast shadow of the tiny house. And then I move on to the snow itself, the snow in the foreground. Now in the photo, you can see the snow in the foreground is very, very noisy because of all of the bumpiness and lighting. So I try to make it a lot cleaner so that it doesn't distract you from the focus of the painting. So this is very important when you are doing your own painting. You need to adjust things and change things to what works for you. I think even at the photo stage, when I look at the photo, as much as I like the photo, I already know that I need to make certain adjustment to make it work for my painting. So don't stuck on the photograph. Just because it looks a certain way in the photo doesn't mean you need to do the exact same thing in your painting. It is your painting, so use that creative license that you have. So now I'm painting the snow in the foreground, I'm making it darker. Do some wet onto wet so you do feel the volume of the snow without giving so much visual noise, like all the bumps in the photo. Adding some cast shadow from the trees. Simple shapes, but it start to bring out the structures and the dimensionality and the lighting of the snow. So now I think the snow is a little bit too light, especially in the foreground. So I do a glaze over it. And again, I want the light in the window be the lightest part of the painting. So I glaze over the snow so that it looked just a little bit darker, but compared to the background, it's still very light so that we have a proper value scale here. Do some more wet onto wet, add some more volume to the snow. It is a pretty thick snow. Adding some more details. And now after it is dry, I start to remove the masking fluid. And yes, you can see how clean those light bulbs are, but they are too clean. They're just white dots. So I am putting some warm tone on it. And because the background is still a little bit damp, it creates this nice glowing effect. I decided to warm up the light in the window a little bit. It's because I want to make it feel a little bit warmer instead of just white. And I did a glazing over the tiny house so the light can pop a little bit more. Because watercolor dried lighter, a lot of time I need to go back in and do a glaze over. But as long as you can do that cleanly, that's not a big deal. Glaze over the rooftop and we are finished. I hope you enjoy this painting and this process. I really like how the painting has came out and it's a wonderful feeling to come back and do watercolor painting again. Thank you for watching my video. I think it is fitting that doing a portrait of my studio as my first painting in 2022. In a way, it's almost like a self-portrait, not on the appearance, but in spirit. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you have a wonderful year ahead of you. Let's enjoy art and enjoy life together. I am Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.